In this series of videos, we're going to explore how to save an image from the camera to the SD card in Android 24 and greater. Now, a lot has changed in this. If you're used to previous versions of Android, we have new things we need to consider, like a file provider and also the permissions model. So, in the first video, we're just going to take a look at an overview, not any code demonstrations, but there will be videos that follow this where we do a hands-on example. So, let's start with that overview. So what we want to do is take a photo with the camera, but we don't need to call the camera pro programmatically when we can just use an implicit intent to invoke the camera. After we've invoked the camera, we want to make sure that the image is saved to the SD card. So what changed in Android 24 and greater? Well, there's a bit of security around accessing a file on an SD card, whether you access it by a file or by a URI, you have to set up a file provider. And so that's the first thing. We need to create this file provider and give it access to a certain area where it can save the file. Secondly, we need to request permissions at time of need. I've already created a video on this that describes that process, but we'll need to do it again, maybe a little quicker version this time, when we are invoking the camera. So I'll point you to a different video that goes through what request permissions is, non-request permission result. If you want a deeper explanation for that, I'll just give it a quick explanation in, in this series. So what we need is a button and a click handler. Now the good news is we already have that. We created that in a previous video. Next, we need a location where we want to save the image. We can choose a private directory or we can choose the public directory where all shared images go by default, which is what we're going to use in this case. Then we need an intent with an extra and the flag grant write URI permissions. So essentially, we're not actually saving the image to the SD card. The camera is saving the image to the SD card. So we, we need to proxy permissions over to the camera and say that this external event, this external thing, which we're invoking with an implicit intent, is allowed to save the image to the SD card. Now we need to create our file provider in the Android manifest. The file provider is what gives us access to write to the SD card. Uh, we need camera permissions with the new permissions model, and we need an XML file with a path that the file provider will use to save the file. If this sounds like a lot of work, it, it kind of is. I hate to admit it kind of is. It's gotten a little more complicated recently, which is why I'm going through an overview now, and then we'll take a look at each step individually. Okay, so to create a file provider in the Android manifest, we need to set it up with XML, and we're going to use a certain number of attributes. So Android name, the name of the class we're configuring, uh, the example you see, we can go ahead and leave that as it is. Android authorities is based on the domain name of our application. If you're unsure what your domain name of your application is, look in the build.gradle file. This is important because it's the unique identifier of your application on the Google Play Store. So you see here it's using a variable application ID. Uh, in my case, I could also put my package name or my domain name in there. Exported, does this need to be public? Uh, that can remain as false. And then grant URI permissions equals true means we want to allow access to this. So again, we'll settle this up in a separate video. Now, the file provider needs to know what paths it's able to save an image to. In other words, what paths we're giving it permission to save files to. So we're going to make a file called provider underscore paths XML, and it's going to have some information, including an external path name and also a path. Here, we're just saying whatever the current directory is. And we're saying, OK, we're granting permissions to write to this directory. Now, this may be a little bit confusing because we have to define the file provider, which we talked about about two slides ago. We have to define that in the Android manifest. But the XML file I just referenced is a separate XML file. We have to glue these together. So inside of this provider tag, this and again, one we assembled earlier, we need to put in a metadata tag. And that metadata tag is going to tell us where to find the XML file that says which directory or directories we're granting access to write to. So the metadata tag that you see here on this slide is what glues those two together. So from code, here's what the code segment's going to look like. First of all, uh, the path to the pictures directory, ours is going to be just a little bit different from this. We're going to make a subtle change to this. But essentially what we're doing by saying get external storage public directory is 
give me that directory on the SD card where all of the common photos are that are shared between applications, all of the common videos, all of the common music, so on and so forth. But with this parameter, environment.directorypictures, we're specifically saying just the photo directory. Next, we need to create a new file in that directory. So we are going to take this pictures directory, we put it in a new file constructor, as you see here, and then we have a name for an image, which is our second argument. So essentially, we're making a file with this name in this directory, which is that public pictures directory. In the old days, we were good, that's all we had to do. But now for security reasons, we don't want to save directly to a file, we have to convert it to a URI. And this is where the extra complications come in that we're talking about in this video, including that file provider. So to convert from our image file to a URI, we take this file that we created up here, this file variable, and we pass it to this file provider .get URI for file uh, method. So we pass that as that last argument. We also need to pass some context information. And then we need to pass in some information that will help us find the file provider configuration from the Android manifest. Next, we start the camera using an implicit intent. So what you see in the constructor here is a constant, so a variable that can't be changed, or the value can't be changed. It represents a string, and the string that it represents is the implicit intent that is used to invoke the camera. Now, we can invoke the camera without, without actually saving a file, and if we invoke the camera without saving a file, we get back a thumbnail, and it's actually quite straightforward. When we want to save the file is when the, when the extra complication comes in. So, camera intent .put extra. Uh, what we're doing here is we're saying we want to save whatever image the user captures to this URI. Now, let's connect the dots here. What's this URI? Boom, it's this guy here, which was created from, boom, this image file here. So, that's the location where we're saving. We attach it with a flag called extra output. The camera's just going to look for that flag, and if it sees it, it's going to say, okay, the user wants to save this image somewhere, and where is that? The second argument, the picture URI. Next, we need to set this flag, which is going to give the camera this kind of proxied permission, which says, okay, save the, you're allowed to save the image. And then finally, we do a start activity for result. Remember what that does. We give it an intent, and it's going to invoke that activity. When that activity is finished, it's going to invoke a callback method called onActivityResult. And we potentially have an option to explore what we received back from the intent and that uh, on activity result. So some differences. What used to be quite straightforward is now a little bit more involved. But again, that's dealing with some security and permissions issues where the camera is actually a different application, something different from us. So we have to grant it permission where it didn't used to work that way. So next, we'll have a demo. You see a couple of trials where I did where I was trying this out. We'll save that for our next video where we do a hands-on code example. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.